listening to the Seven Rivers Student Ministry Podcast. We believe that all students are lovable through a relationship with Jesus. If you'd like to know more about our ministry, you can visit us at www.sevenrivers.org backslash students. This is the Culture Cast. Culture Cast. Nice. I think you hit every note. Every yeah, that's the goal to hit <laughs> all the off key notes and then on the key notes and just I love every it. note. I love it. Uh, this is where we talk about uh, where we engage culture with the gospel. And yes. I'm Mikey Puckett. I'm Jason Newayhead. And we believe all students are lovable through a relationship with Jesus. 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 Uh, Jason's in a singing mood today. <laughs> yeah, th- this whole this whole thing is gonna be. Um, You're gonna sing the whole. This is like gonna be a, mu- a, musical. a musical. You know, there's oh, some that speaking. Would be so awesome. <laughs> so, anyways, uh, we're gonna dive in. We believe that everybody, whether Christian or non-Christian, they bear God's image, and so with these artists and with these filmmakers and with people who are producing content. Uh, whether it's secular or Christian, we, we believe it's going to bring glory to God mm-hmm. and, and we can talk about it, engage it with our gospel shades, gospel shades, gospel shades. So let's send it. All right. All right. You ready? Let's do it. Buckle up. Oh, that was a terrible sound effect. <laughs> <laughs> Discussing is the weekend. The weekend. I don't actually know too much about the weekend. I knew about our previous Post Malone and yeah. Taylor Swift. T Swizzle. T Swizzle. <laughs> I like that. That should be her, then her next album. Think, yeah. T Swizzle. T Swizzle. Yeah. Uh, and and so the weekend is is apparently popular. Uh, yeah. Very popular. And they wrote a song called Blinding Lights. And we're going to we're going to talk about it. We're going to engage it with the gospel and we're going to put on the gospel shades and, and try to push into um, what we affirm and what we challenge. But let's first off start off with uh, a little bit of background from our fun facts with Jason. Fun, fun facts with Jason. <laughs> fun facts with Jason. He's going to, he's going to take it from here. So the weekend, his real name is Abel Tisafe. I'm pretty sure I said that wrong, but we're going <laughs> to go with it. T E S F A Y E. Tell us what, you tell us, email yeah, us yeah. at srsm at Call us up and, <laughs> and you create some pronunciation of that. We don't know what it is. Um, so here's here's the fun fact about um, the weekend. He doesn't like to do interviews, so we don't know a lot about him. <laughs> Maybe that's why we don't know um, much about this artist. <laughs> so he's very like he's he's private in a lot of degrees. He doesn't like to do interviews. I don't know why. He is from Toronto, Canada. Um, he became the weekend because. He he liked the weekend name, but someone had the weekend with the E, so W E E K E N D. So what would you do in that situation? I would do what he did. Take the take e- the second E or third E out. Like so third E. So W E E K N D. The weekend. Right. You can't say like week n d. Week n d. Week n d. D n d. N d. N d. <laughs> But you say the weekend because your yeah. your brain won't let you yeah. go weak. Nid. It won't. Weak. Nid. Maybe that is how he wants us to say it though. And weak. We, nid. And he's weak been nid. along with it. He's just yeah. So, um, sorry guys, we're distracting all from the real stuff. We are. So what else? What else do we know about him? We know that Michael Jackson had a big influence on him. MJ. MJ. Um, he, here's here's a a sad part that we know that. We know that his father left him mm-hmm. when he was a toddler, um, and th- this is like a pain that I don't I don't know what that's like. Um, Mikey doesn't know what that's like. You know, just yeah. have a father leave you, um, yeah. um, and that's hard. And some of you know what that feels like. Some of y'all know right. what that feels like to have a father leave you early on. Yeah. So he wrote this song 
essentially, or yep. or is there more fun facts? More fun facts. Uh, there's there's always more fun facts, but ooh, ooh. we we can continue. We'll we, continue. We, we, we can come back to the. Fun I may facts. have cut Jason off <laughs> early. <laughs> I have I'm about three hundred more fun facts, Jason, but we'll skip. We'll skip. I'm this. sorry. Your fun <laughs> facts are important. So, how about how about you just you just randomly drop a fun fact <laughs> every just, now? I'll and just pause it right in the middle and be like, fun fact. Fun fact. Oh, Jason. <laughs> So he wrote this song called Blinding Lights, and uh, as I was reading it and, and listening to it, I was able to, and especially, I think it helps when you print off the lyrics and you read the lyrics. I, I do recommend that, like, yeah, listen to the song, but then I think going online and, and finding the lyrics and actually reading the lyrics is, is really helpful as well. Uh, but what I was picking up on is, is a, a huge theme of loneliness, which we were just talking about his story of him being abandoned by his father. Like, can't imagine the void that he feels and the mm-hmm. loneliness that he feels from that. Um, and even the longing to yeah. know his um, biological father, to long and to want to know your parents uh, is a real desire of every child. Like you and I, I mean, we yeah. long to know our parents, know more. As much as as a teenager, we like are like, oh, I hate my parents or I, I can't stand them. I want to yeah. rebel against them. And maybe you don't, but stereotypically teenagers w- are known for essentially rebelling against their, the ways of their parents. As much as you might feel that deep down inside, you have a longing desire to know and love your parents even more and to be loved by them and to be known by them as well. And so that's something that he is missing and, and you yeah. can pick up in the song as well. But Jason, why don't you give us a little bit of um, a summation of the song and some of the main themes um, from the research that you were able to do. Um, yeah, so the song is called Blinding Lights, um, and pretty much it's it's a metaphor um, for him. Like, So he's saying like there is a state um, for him that he, he's like devo- devoid of uh, like a woman. He wants he wants mm. a relationship. He, he's either longing for something in the past or longing for something in the future, but he's, right now he's blinded by the lights. Um, so that, that's kind of like a quick summary of it. Uh, we can w- let's dig in and dive in, see what what else we can find. What are, what are yeah. some themes? And I would say like one of the common themes that we see in popular music today is this relational man and woman, um, you know, romantic, uh, fantasized relationship that is kind of like really impressed on our culture. Mm. And you know, I think it might be an area where, you know, as we think about affirming and challenging, this could be something we challenge is saying, you know, uh, life, the ultimate, you know, relationship isn't just with a boy or a girl, a boyfriend and girlfriend. You know, that's not yeah. the ultimate relationship. A lot of times we, we engage with these songs, especially this song, and you think, man, his ultimate goal, his ultimate view of relationship is a relationship with this woman. And what I'm saying, and what you and I would say is, no, the ultimate relationship is re- everyone longs for is a relationship with their father in heaven, mm. with their dad in heaven. Like Post Malone, I mean, sorry, <laughs> The Weeknd, <laughs> The Weeknd essentially <laughs> uh, is, you know, he, he was abandoned by his father, and so he longs for uh, that, relationship. that relationship. But don't we all long and groan to know our creator to know the one who made us and designed us. And if maybe when you were a little kid, at some point you realize you're like, how did I get here? Where did I come from? Hmm. Uh, Who made me, who made us? Uh, And maybe you've even thought like, okay, so like I come from my mom and dad. Well, where did they come from? And then where did they come from? And then where did they come from? And maybe one day, one night you were sitting in your bed and you took that train all the way down (laughs) and like where, who was the first and and who created and who made that. And, And that's what we deeply long for is to know our yeah. creator and know who designed us and wrote our DNA out. And so when we replace that longing and that relationship, that relationship with our father in heaven, um, God with women or, or men or boyfriend and girlfriend or the idea of a perfect relationship. Yeah. Idea or idolatry of marriage or idolatry. Uh, you know, I think that can be very common is this idea in Christian culture. Subculture is to idolize marriage idolize the idea that the goal of a Christian is to find a Christian spouse and marry them. That's Mm. not the goal of Christianity. It's not. No. And so I I think a lot of times Christian marriages, when they get in them, they sound a lot like this. (laughs) They sound a lot like this, you know, uh, where there's this kind of like addiction to each other, where they're both trying to meet each other's needs and they can't Mm. uh, because 
uh, they're in a sense they're blinded by the light, and and they're not seeing um, the way, the truth, and the light. They're not seeing Jesus. And that's what we really need, and we really miss uh, a lot of. So I don't know. What are some things that you saw that you would want to affirm in this? That some truths, and what are some things you would want to challenge, Jason, as we're just talking about it? Yeah. I f- sorry, um, and I feel like I just talked way too long. No, so. that's that's good. <laughs> um, a couple things I would affirm, you know, like so, is like there is a desire for more. You know, there is a desire here um, that we can ask for more. Hmm. Like he wants, he wants to be loved. Right. He wants to be yeah. seen. He wants to, uh, um, you know, he wants to be pursued. Um, he can't sleep because hmm. he's thinking about it. He's uh, and there's other things like. Yeah, this relationship sounds emotionally unhealthy, yeah. unstable. Yeah, if he's if he's if he's up right. all night right. thinking about it, there must be something that causes disruption. Yeah, and that's probably not good. That's it's not good. it's bad. It's not good to be dependent on someone for your satisfaction. No one can meet you like and be able to meet your expectations mm. ever. No yeah. human being can. Yeah. Sorry. <laughs> no, that's good. Yeah, ex- absolutely. No one can. Um, and so, um, so there, so that desire is there. I think mm. that that's that's a real desire that right. we all have that we want to be satisfied. Right. Um, but the o- I think the only way for th- the the blinding lo- like the lights to be stopping blinding is is to look somewhere else mm. to stop looking at a relationship because you're always I feel like he's mm. always going to be blinded by that's the lights um, unless you look. Um, yeah. The other way, you look up. Yeah. If you stop looking around you, and you look up to Jesus. Is yeah. the only way not to be blinded. Yeah. By his light, his light is not blinding. It helps right. us see, right? Um, rather than cause us to be in darkness. Yeah, he says, um, "I'm going through withdrawals, like," and he says, "You can turn me on with just a touch." Like he's longing for this feeling, for this moment, this brief moment, this brief feeling that comes through sex or it comes through connection. Uh, it comes through just you know being together with someone else, but it's so fleeting because at the end of the day, when you go to bed at night, it's just you, right? I mean, maybe you who are listening experience that every night. You know, you hang out with your friends. You appear to be the most like social person in the world, or you have a boyfriend or a girlfriend, or you have a spouse, uh, and then you go to bed at night and you still feel alone, uh, and you still feel this feeling like I've been trying to call, I've been m- on my own for long enough. I'm going through withdrawals. Um, you don't even have to do too much. Uh, you can just turn me on with just a touch. And so it's like, I am seeing this and I'm going, oh my goodness, this is what we go through when we're not in relationship with Jesus. We actually do go through withdrawals. Mm. When our relationship with Christ um, or our relationship with our Father in heaven, our Creator, is severed by sin, we go through withdrawals. And so we look to things of this world, things of, on earth, uh, to satisfy our God-sized holes in our heart. I mean, like, and I'm using a lot of Christianese in here, but essentially what I'm saying is, is you're talking about wanting to be satisfied, and we're craving that satisfaction. I'm craving that satisfaction, and I'm trying to call anything I can on anybody who I can, and I'm going through withdrawals because I just need fixes. Uh, whether that's buying something on Amazon or binging a Netflix show or struggling with, you know, uh, pornography or sexual addiction or whether that's struggling with drinking or, you know, like these are all behaviors. Yeah. But the real problem is at the heart and, and, and the longing to be satisfied. And those behaviors just numb that pain that I feel and that I engage and they numb yours and they numb, you know, the ones that the people who are listening, they, they numb your pain. And so what we're saying is, uh, Maybe you're calling the wrong person on yeah. the wrong person on the wrong things, and you're going through withdrawals because what you really need is a relationship with your creator. Mm. So I want to bring up something that when he's talking about being blinded by the lights, you know, um, and I can't sleep until I feel your touch. I feel like that's scripture. Mm. And w- immediately what I was reminded of was Mark eight twenty two, And I want to read you guys this story because think about this, being blind like physically blind, and you're longing to feel touched. Like, actually imagine being a blind person. What's the only thing you have? You can't see things, but you have touch, Uh the sensation of touch and words and hearing things. And so those are heightened, and so you long to be touched. So here's Mark 8, 22, and this is what Jesus does with a blind man. 
And they came to Bethsaida. And some people brought to him a blind man and begged him to touch him. They begged Jesus to touch him, to touch him. And he took the blind man by the hand, touch, and led him out of the village. And when he had spit on his eyes and laid his hands on him, touch, he asked him, do you see anything? And he looked up and said, I see people, but they look like trees walking. Then Jesus laid his hands on his eyes again, touch, and he opened his eyes and his sight was restored and he saw everything clearly. And he sent him to his home saying, do not even enter the village. You have this story mm. where a blind man is healed by the touch of Jesus. Wow. Um, Weekend says, I can't sleep until I feel your touch. I am longing for the touch. touch yeah. And he's not just longing for the touch of a woman. He's longing for the touch of Jesus mm. on his own eyes um, to reveal to him the true light, which is him. Mm. Um, I don't know. I mean, like, yeah. I'm ready to just, like, throw down and let's, like, yeah. let's preach and let's worship. Well, but that's well said. My I, don't, I don't know what you um, think about that or how that's resonating with you. And maybe that resonates with you in your story, Jason. I don't know. Yeah. Um, I think, you know, I think it's beautiful how you connect to that because there is an aspect of being blind and touch in both of those stories. Um, and The weekend clearly states that. You know, he states his... Um, like his blindness, you know, that we're all, we're all, we're all born blind in a sense Mm. of, uh, we don't see. And and I think where the weekend goes, he, he goes and looks at, uh, like a romantic relationship as a way to see. And we're like, you're always going to be blinded. If you do that, you're always going to be, um, Jesus needs to, um, touch him, you know, and touch, um, touch the blinded for them to see. Um. Yeah. And I think when we're stuck in moments like that, we don't want the true light. He talks about, so he's talking about city lights. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Like those are fake lights. Yeah. They're not true light. And then he talks about, I can see the sunlight of the sky, the sun, the real Mm -hmm. light coming up. So what does he do? He wants to go hit the road and hide. I mean, he hits the road in overdrive. He's trying to hide. He's trying while the night is still happening, while the, fake lights are still shining he wants to find that touch Mm. but he doesn't realize that as the sun comes up that is the touch of you know the sun of jesus like that sunlight coming up the real light coming up why does he want to hide from that because what happens at night is that's what he's longing for is for that Um, he's longing for that kind of touch and so it's just misplaced and i actually think the liturgy of I'm blinded by the song of I'm blinded by the lights. I can't sleep until I feel your touch. Could that not be something you and I like as a liturgy say to the Lord, to Jesus in worship? Mm. I'm blinded by the lights. Oh God, I can't sleep until I feel your touch. Yeah, absolutely. Like that's so true for me. I can't rest. I can't be satisfied. I can't feel fulfilled until I feel your touch. So father, touch me. Father, be near to me. Father, see me. Father, know me. Mm-hmm. Like, that's what I'm crying out for. Yeah. And you're bringing an element of, like, truth. Like, hey, I, I feel blinded right now, God. Yeah. And, I'm, and you're pleading to him to touch you and right. to restore you and to renew you, to refresh you. And I think um, part of that is coming into the, s- the sunlight. Stop living your life, life in the dark. Yeah. Come into the sunlight. Come into the light with your story, with yourself. Admit that I am seeking satisfaction from a million of other things outside of the true satisfaction of Jesus that comes in that relationship with him. I'm just seeking, I'm seeking it all little quick fixes and band-aids because it's thrilling or because it gives me, it kind of, you know, it's where my friends are. It's what, mm. what it's, I'm just, I'm chasing after it, but it's exhausting and I can't sleep and I'm not getting any rest. And I just wake up and begrudgingly go through the day and then I live for the nighttime again, and then I begrudgingly go through the day, and all that's happening at night is I'm being taken advantage of, and I'm taking advantage of others, and what I really long to is to be touched, the healing touch of Jesus. I long to be healed, not taken advantage of. I long to be touched in a way that doesn't just, isn't just a quick fix, but that is like an ever, never ceasing, never ending, loving touch that holds me throughout all my days, through thick or thin, through good and bad, through dark times and good times. That's what I'm looking for. Yeah. And so, like, I don't know. As we've even been talking about it, I'm like, 
this we could literally i'm blinded by the lights i can't sleep until i feel your touch we could sing that in a worship song absolutely like it's like that could be sung in a christian song yeah and it's just changing the object that it's directed towards mm. is the object is jesus yeah and is that for you is is your object of worship jesus or is mm. it a, a boyfriend or girlfriend a yeah. relationship a marriage a Christian marriage even that yeah. can be an idol idol maybe it's your kids yeah maybe it's your you know maybe who is tr- who are you putting expectations on that are impossible to fill yeah you know so. or like I know we uh so we all have this desire to be satisfied and um look to the, the true light you know Jesus but like it doesn't even have to be relationships that we look like can fall away from like you know, it could be like success or mm, grades yes. or like, hey, I, I'm a straight A student, you know, and that's I'm, I'm going to keep that. And that's where my identity is, you know. Yeah. Um, and so we can look to different things. Um, but what we see the weekend doing is looking towards a relationship to be the ultimate. Um, yeah. I think w- a prayer that we can have for him is is that he would know his father, mm. his father, God, the creator, not just his biological that he would feel the acceptance and love of God on him mm. um, that God looks at him and says this is my son who I'm well pleased he matters to me yeah uh, so uh, Mikey you wanna do you wanna pray for yeah, us yeah uh, nice nice usually I make you pray yeah, so no, I got you, beat you, beat you beat to it, it. <laughs> alright I'll pray for the weekend and uh, we'll wrap it up um, and also just if you're here like l- confess that you're blind I'm confessing that right now I'm blinded I'm blinded by the lights of night you know, of Sin City, I'm, I'm lonely there, and um, I long for a touch, to feel a touch, and it's, and I think it's the touch of others, or the touch of success, or touch of grades, but what I really need is the touch of Jesus, and so confess that with us, too, as, as we're praying, so Father, um, God, uh, it is worshipful to read a secular song, and to encounter uh, the good news um, that we see here, uh, we are, I am humbled um, to see um, some, a beautiful line like, I'm blinded by the lights. I can't sleep until I feel your touch. Um, let that be our prayer and our confession right now. Uh, Father, we pray for the weekend and uh, wherever he is right now, uh, that you would meet him and that you would show him that you are his God, you are his creator, um, that you love him. Um, that what he's been looking for all along is not his biological father or a woman, but is him. And touch him, Father, so he may see. Touch his eyes so that he can see. And touch him so that he no longer hides, um, but lives in the light. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. There we go. Man, we're cranking them out. Yeah. Episode three in, in the, you know, full sin, done, wrapped up. There Let's we go. do it. Thanks for so. listening. Um, if you if you have any questions, suggestions, feel free to email us at Seven Rivers. Oh, S R S M at Seven Rivers Come on, Jason. That's I'm the, sorry. I'm sorry. This is an easy email. It's, I'm just kidding. I'm giving you all yeah. time. All right. Or, or we'll Michael, Michael, Michael Puck. No, 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 no. <laughs> <laughs> all right. We love you guys. <laughs> Thank you for listening to the Culture Cast, where we engage culture with the gospel. If you have any questions or maybe you have a song, a favorite song that you would want us to talk about or a movie or Netflix show that we can maybe uh, bring into this, into this uh, podcast, we'd love to. So you can reach out to us at srsm at sevenrivers.org. That's srsm at sevenrivers.org. Send us an email and uh, we'll engage with that content that you offer us or any questions or concerns that you have. If you also want to find out more about our ministry, Seven Rivers Student Ministry, you can go to sevenrivers.org backslash students. We love you guys. You matter to us, and uh, you're lovable through a relationship with Jesus.